Hello to our church family, all of the congregation of Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church. This is your minister, Leonard Harris, and again, it is a pleasure and an opportunity to be before you to share our Sunday School lesson, which is lesson number 10 for November the 6th. 2022. And this is our fall session of our Faith Pathway study. This is Unit 3, entitled, We Are God's Artwork. And this particular lesson for this Sunday is Chosen. Chosen. Our devotional reading is the book of Esther, 4th chapter, verses 5 through 17. Our background scriptures are Revelation, the 2nd chapter, verses 1 through 7. Acts, the 19th chapter. And our printed passage is the same as our last uh, selection for our background scriptures, which is Ephesians, the first chapter, verses 1 through 14. And our key verse for our lesson is, Praise be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. And this is the third verse of Ephesians 1. Our lesson's aims are examine the nature of God's blessing as described in the book of Ephesians, appreciate the benefits of being adopted in God's family and identify reasons to praise God. And then our different sections of our lesson is the first entitled Chosen, Selected by the Father. And this will be Ephesians 1 verses 1 through 6. Our second point is chosen, redeemed by the Son, Ephesians 1, verses 7 through 12. And our last part is chosen, secured by the Holy Spirit. And those will conclude the verses 13 through 14. So let us uh, begin with prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you once and again for this time and uh, this occasion that we are able to study your word and to receive the understanding that you would have us to know. And we thank you. We already bless and praise your name because you are worthy. But we just thank you for giving us a mind to draw ourselves in to your instruction that we would be better prepared to be lights in a dark and dying world. And Father, we just, as always, ask that once we have received your understanding, that we would not just be hearers of your word alone, but doers as well. And we ask it all in the name of Christ, and for his sake we ask it. Amen. Our lesson in our first uh, part, Selected by the Father. And uh, a couple of things uh, we wanted to cite in verses 2 and 3. Uh, Ephesians 1, verses 1 through 6. 
But in the second and the third verse, uh, the book of Ephesians has a lot of affirmations. It affirms many things concerning God and then God's design or God's divine plan for God's creation. And some of those are listed in our lesson uh, this day. And we want to lift what God has uttered in the word of God. And in verse 2 and 3, it says, Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul here is addressing the people of Ephesus. And uh, I think one of the things to cite in this as well is where is Paul when Paul is writing these things to the people of Ephesus. Paul is in prison. And so amidst his location, amidst him being held against his will and being imprisoned, he is still able to utter unto the people affirmations and encouragement to increase and lift their spirits while at the same time he is imprisoned. And when we look at how he addresses in his greeting, in his introduction, uh, and uh, just identifying and addressing the people of Ephesus. Uh, he says, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. So he affirms that not just grace and peace be unto you, or not just the customary greeting of saying shalom or peace be unto you, but he affirms that grace and peace to you from who? From your creator and from the son of the God of creation. Then in verse 3, he goes on to say, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. So at first, he affirms to us that the grace and the peace of God be upon you, then second, he affirms that we should still be in praise to the God and Father of Lord Jesus Christ. Why are a tag to the introduction of the sentence who has blessed us in heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. Now, when I first read this, and as we read further in verses 4 and 5, uh, I began to think about uh, the planning of God, the divine uh plan and the uh, divine execution and order of God's intervening in and on behalf of God's creation. God instilling and already ordaining order in 
what God had created. And I look at it and say, in his heavenly realms, in the in the immediate environment, in the the space around the abode of God, in that esteemed aura and place, the thinking of God was established and in that peaceful, serene location, God then gives unto us blessings in heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing being fulfilled in Christ. And so uh, something that came to me as we were looking into our lesson and in verses four and five, uh, it says that he chose us and in the before the creation of the world. Now think about that. Before the creation of that which we see in our midst, before the creation of this tangible physical uh, body in the heavenly realms, earth, before the creation of the world, he thought about us. And it says he chose us before the creation of the world to be a holy and blameless in his sight. In what spirit, what motivated, what motivated this, uh, what triggered in, in the text, uh, in the scripture, what triggered uh, God to intervene and to uh, proceed in this manner in verse four at the end where it says wanted us to be holy and blameless in his sight it said in love in love he predestined us for ops uh, for adoption to the sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will. Now this does not just signify in accordance with the pleasure and the will of Christ, but in the pleasure and the will of God. Uh, for we know that Christ uttered at one of the most intense moments uh, of his human experience that not my will, but thy will be done. So what we see emulated in the life of Christ is the will of God being present in human form to set an example for what God's intention was and is for us. Now, uh, when we uh, go uh, further into our lesson and we begin to speak about the uh, uh, inheritance uh, and we begin to speak about uh, God's intention, uh, depositing and guaranteeing our inheritance, um, uh, I reflect upon uh, the number 100 in the book of Psalms and it says no number 100 this is verse 3 know that the Lord he is God it is he who has made us and not we ourselves 
we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. And to tag on to the 100 number of Psalm of verse 3, also we want to look, because when we speak towards the end of our lesson about the inheritance, we want to speak about Psalm number 127, and again, verse 3, it says, Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is his reward. So when we speak of the predestination uh, and we speak of God's purpose and we speak of the inheritance we first acknowledge that it is he that has made us and not we ourselves heritage is a casting of lots uh, in the translation uh, and in the translation of the word heritage, it speaks of it being a casting of lots. And lots of what? Lots of the portion and the provisions that God had blessed and granted to the people of his choosing. This was a normal practice among the people of Israel. Each grouping, each, uh, uh, each tribe of the nation of Israel were given divisions uh, among the people. Those were the provisions that were provided to each group. And at different times, they would cast their lots. They would cast the portions and the provisions that have been provided to them from the God of creation. And so the heritage is the possession of God. Yes, they are provisions for us in our earthly realm, but they are God's possessions that have been afforded unto us. And then when we move from identifying them as God's heritage, God's portions, God's provisions, then we recognize that even into our promise that it says we will inherit, inherit God's promises, God's blessings, God's grace. And so when we think about uh, many times uh, the concern about being predestined, and uh, uh, adopted into the family of God is simply saying that if we adhered our ears to the teachings of God, by the Spirit of God, we have been selected. And the Spirit pricked our hearts and acknowledge that there was a calling upon our lives and that the one who placed the call only called what he had already created and sent a signal to his creation to come back to the one that created you. And so when we think of, of what uh, the the magnitude 
of God's understanding and purpose in our lives as we look at what then is expected of us. Now, uh, when it spoke about grace, um, and it talks about uh, grace and peace be unto you, we know that grace is the unmerited favor that God, a gift, it is a gift from God that is granted unto those that believe upon God. And it is, we refer to it as being unmerited because it's not based upon some acts that we have performed that God says, okay, now I have to give them a reward for their deeds. So therefore, uh, because of what they've done, I have to do something in return. I have to grant them something as like a reward. But when we look into the grace, the abundant grace that was granted unto us, we want to look at it from the scripture uh, found in Ephesians 2 and 8. And it reads, For by grace you have been saved through faith. So by grace you have been preserved. By grace you have been selected. By grace you have been set apart through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. And why does it detail for us that it's not about what you've done? Because it says, not of works, lest anyone should boast. God understood the frailties of humanity, that we want to claim the works that we perform and we sometimes our ego drives us to boast about what I, what I, what I did. So it says that, and not of works, lest anyone should boast for we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus for what? For good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. And in our commentary, it spoke of the grace and peace. And it said that the peace is the result in the believer's life for following in the grace that was abound to us. And so again, I retract back to scripture saying that it is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Coinciding with verse 10 in Second Ephesians, which says we are his workmanship. We are God's design created by the father of creation. And uh, when we uh, think about, uh, again, the uh, one of the aims of our lesson was the nature of God. And of course, uh, we can't really expound upon uh, the nature of God. But we can judge the quality and the nature of God by what God does, how God provided, how God intervenes, how God directs, how God corrects. We can see the will of God 
by how God engages with us and that we recognize through the grace and the mercy of God that God doesn't even punish or uh, correct us in the manner which our behavior and our actions have actually set in place. But because of the grace and mercy of God, we are pardoned because we were created in love and therefore God administers grace and mercy unto us to bring us back to his purpose and will for us in the beginning. Part two of our lesson entitled Redeemed by the Son. Redeemed by the Son. And in verse 7 uh, through 9, uh, it, it says to us that in him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace. Again here, showing God intervening on behalf of humankind. Not because humanity has been so great, but because God and God's love for what he created. And he again intervenes to do for man what man was unable to do for himself. Now let's look at what scripture says. It says, in him we have redemption through his blood. The forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us with all wisdom and understanding. Now, I wanted to uh, look at this from another perspective, uh, and that we would find in the ninth chapter of Hebrews. And in the ninth chapter of Hebrews, uh, you could start your reading at the 19th verse. Ninth chapter of Hebrews, the 19th verse. It speaks of when Moses spoke to the people, every precept of all the people according to the law, he took calves and goats and water and scarlet wood and hyssop and sprinkled both the book itself and all the people saying, this is the blood of the covenant which God has commanded you. Then likewise, he sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry. And according to the law, almost all things are purified with blood and without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. So we know that the wages of sin is death, but the wages of righteousness is eternal life. And when we look at this, we recognize here, speaking of which was purposed in Christ. So, we start our reading at the 19th verse, but as we read further, we see now many times uh, during our uh, commemoration of the ordination of communion, it is said sometimes that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. Sin in its end leads to death. And we see plenty of death today and plenty of the shedding of blood. Uh, but here, what God showing again, how God intervenes and God's will for his people. 
is is that because we have caused uh in the act of sin and disobedience uh unto God because our behavior has caused the shedding of blood then God said I'm going to purify your act with the shedding of righteous blood not evil not disobedient not corrupted blood shed but with the shedding of righteous blood and notice the contrast here in uh, the ninth chapter of Hebrews, uh, Moses is uh, killing goats and calves and and shedding the blood of innocent animals on behalf of man's disobedience. But it goes further and it says, therefore, it was necessary. This is verse 23. Therefore, it was necessary that the copies of the things in the heavens should be purified with these, but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. So the copies, the goats, the calves, the lambs that were sacrificed, what scripture says that, no, they had to be purified. These were just copies of things, but they had to be purified with better sacrifices than these then it says for christ has not entered holy places made with hands which are copies of the true but into heaven itself now to appear in the presence of god for us it goes on i have to read this it goes on it says not that he should offer himself often as was the practice of the priest had to go in every year to atone for the evil of mankind. But here it says not that Christ should have to sacrifice himself every year again and again and again and again. But it says not often as the high priest enters the most holy place every year with blood of another, he then would have to suffer often since the foundation of the world. But now, once at the end of the age, at the end of the appointed time set by God in his divine plan, he has appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And notice this key point here. It says, as it is appointed for men to die once, but after this, the judgment. So Christ was offered once to bear the sins of many. To eliminate this constant repeta uh, repetition of always, uh, well, Christ, you got to go back and atone again. People still have not got it. They still are wandering in the darkness. You got to go back and be crucified again. So we are thankful that God has so divinely set up the redemption of mankind. And... As we come uh, to our closing here, um, in the last part of our lesson saying secured by the Holy Spirit, uh, it speaks here, uh, and you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed you were marked in him with a seal. And the seal is the promised Holy Spirit. Who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to praise his glory. So, as we look at our conclusion 
of our lesson, secured by the Holy Spirit. We know in John, the 14th chapter and the 16th chapter, God says, I will not leave you comfortless, but I will send unto you the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will teach you all things. Christ understood that even when he was amidst the people, he said, there were many things that I want to teach you, that I want to tell you. However, you cannot bear them now. But when he, the Holy Spirit comes, he will teach you all things. As always, our prayer is that the protection, the blessings, the understanding of God will rest, rule, and abide with all of God's children. And we pray that something will said or lifted uh, that will give insight into God's will and God's purpose in our lives. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer.